Hello, everybody, and welcome back as we're getting ready for game number two of this best of five series. DSG, the returning champions, are continuing their redemption arc here, Joshi. They strike first and win the game in what felt like a pretty controlled style, not what we saw from DSG earlier in the spring split. And you definitely look at the draft that came through from this one because you know that that Nico pick we saw how quickly it was locked in. They knew what they yeah. were about, but we got to start looking at what the drafts are going to be because it is going to be a fearless series. Every single time you pick a champion, you're not allowed to pick it for the rest of the series. I'm happy you bring that up because we have a couple of unique uh, picks associated with some of our players, specifically one that we were talking about before coming live again. What happened with Niles in that game? He blind picks the Rumble. They banned four Tenacity champions. And I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to sugarcoat it either. It didn't really feel like Niles contributed that much to that game, save for one really strong equalizer play where he teleports in, drops ult, and then backs. <laughs> and that was kind of the Niles story uh, in that game number one. So we're going to do something fun here where Twitch check can interact with us. If our mods are ready, we're going to put out a poll. Josh, you've been thinking, the Niles champions, he's got a deep champ pool. He's got these niche picks he can pull out. And we're going to associate them with our Subway sidekicks. So uh, everybody in chat, get ready, because Josh is going to lay it on us. What are the three champions that you want to see Niles start to prioritize more in this best of five? Well, the big thing that we always know is these pocket picks as the sidekicks come through from the top lane. Niles has been known for some very strong champions throughout the course of his career. The first one, we're going to set them up as a poll for chat. Which one of these champions do you want to see Niles play this series? The first one, we got to go with the cookie. We got Camille. This is a champion that Niles played for <laughs> okay. years and years, and he was one of the mm -hmm. best Camilles on the server, and he would create so much pressure in the side lane where he kind of got the reputation for being a bit of a flipper because sometimes he would take yeah. an entire turret, and sometimes he would die before he got there but it was something I like he the was cookie cutter pick because she's got scissor legs also you know there you go I like that yeah. one the second one we got the gangplank the churro coming in for Niles as well this one's got a little okay. bit more spice to it right it's not a champion that we've seen in competitive for a while but every time it comes up you know Niles is one of the first ones to adopt it okay and then our last one of course is the pretzel Pantheon. Now, I'm going to let you go! talk a little bit more about Niles on the Pantheon as a bit of a specialist yourself, but we can always see this one comes through. Let us know which one of these you want to see Niles play in this series. I would vote for Pantheon. When I look at how MU even approached that game, it was trying to punish Tenacity in the side lane. Their biggest blunder at the end of that game five members hovering bottom jungle while everyone from DSG was around Baron. It's because they saw Tenacity. They had picked him so many times in that uh, game one. It felt like they were conditioned, like, okay, we can just kill Tenacity anytime. If you have something like Pantheon ult to get around the map faster, I think that enables this punish the side lane style from MU even more. So that would be my vote. But of course, the mods will get up the uh, votes again. It is uh, Pantheon, Gangplank, or Camille for the vote. So True. thank you for doing that one, Josh. Let's get into draft now for game number two. A reminder, everybody grayed out our champions that these teams cannot play going into this game. And crucially, I think the fact that we lost the Rumble, the Zinjo, and the Ari, and honestly, the Jinx and the Rao, I feel as though Maryville lost this game one harder because of the fearless nature of the draft, right? These are all characters that I would love to have seen Maryville play again, whereas on the side of ESG, yeah, you lose the Senna. Like, you were going to get one game of Senna at some point throughout the series. The Nico is a nice counter pick to have, but the Yone is not that big of a loss coming through. The Huey is not that big of a loss for yeah. Disguise. Whereas Maryville, I feel like they lost five of their strong champions and they really needed to win with it. And this is not what we expected necessarily, because I had favored MU going into the Specify, but throughout the Best of Five, we expected them to have more champ pools. It hurts even more if the big meta you know, threats right now are not available to them anymore. It will pinch their options here in draft. But you know what they haven't picked yet? That's Senna. DSU are blue side in game one. They picked it first. MU are blue side in game two, and they will also pick it first. And I think it's also worth noting that with this Renekton coming through for Tenacity, right, that'll also be the only time this entire series he's allowed to pick it. And now with the Renekton coming through, we'll see how effectively he can push around Niles. Because even though we saw that Tenacity had some good moments on the Yone, it really came off the fact that he was supported by Parry for some of those early yeah. game plays. But as we go into the rest of the draft, it is worth noting that the Santa Tom Kench has already been picked up. You were asking that Disguise were going to play this in Game 1. Now Maryville are going to be the ones to grab that one, so they will have a lot of safety for whatever backline they choose to pick. 
I like this. I think it's the best pairing with the Senna. The only thing you're really losing out on at this point is the potential of like a Smolder Tom Kench, uh, if you want to lean on that later in the best of five. But I think for right now, this makes a lot of sense. And they're going to go for an early uh, counter pick for top lane, Nar for Niles. And this is one of my favorite champions and one of the best counter picks. And okay, I was just thinking about this a moment ago. All right. <laughs> when are we going to be getting the smolders in this? Because you should expect both sides of this matchup will want to get their smolder game because yep. in many ways it is it feels like an auto win sometimes when you have this champion on <laughs> your team. And now, these guys want to take it into the Senna, and this becomes very much, again, are you an LPL fan where the Smolder has been reigning supreme, or are you an LCK fan where the Senna has been consistently winning this matchup? Smolder nearly guarantees you wins later on in the game, but you just need to get him there. Yeah, and I will say that game one was pretty fast. It didn't feel like there would have been a lot of time for a bot lane to just have a safe scale. But also, as long as you're living on the smolder, you don't need to get kills. If you're just hitting champions with your abilities, it does also help you scale. So it's not necessarily a bad thing if we do see a lot of action bot side, as long as Minui can stay alive for all of that. So we'll keep our eyes on that going forward. But both bot lanes and top lanes locked in means it's going to be a jungle focus for the second round of bans. And it makes a lot of sense, right? The Xin Zhao is not pickable here for Maryville, but I am kind of curious, right? We did see the Xin Zhao come out without the Karma, but the other major champions that we are going to be looking at is Yuji loves bringing out the... Uh, oh gosh, what's it called? The Viego. The, I had to yes. remember, it's like the one that looks like Nymera, right? Whenever he <laughs> comes out, it is something that you know Yuji loves to go for, and you actually have a lot of safety. You have people who are going to be jumping in with you into the middle of the fight with the Nar, with the Tom Kench, and so it is still an option here, and just guys are not worried about it. And you know what they also have access to is the Kindred. Uh, it was banned away in that first game. Another thing that Yuji is kind of known for. Here we go. Orianna priority. If you're surprised to see it drop so much in priority, I remember it is Fearless Draft. So you only get that one game with this champion. You need to make sure the composition will work for it. DSG are confident enough to lock it in here. And it will be countered by the Nico here for Spyrax. So what does Yuji want to pilot? There it is. Like you said, we got Nymera locked in. There we go, coming through. Shoutouts to the LPL once again. But that means one last pick has to come through for Disguise. What does Parry want to play? Zinja has been taken off the table. Vi is already gone as well. In general, I kind of think of Parry, I almost want to say like Maokai feels like a good spot right here just because it is something that we haven't been seeing nearly as much but you just need something that is going to slow down the attacks that is going to slow down their access to Manui and Ooh. Wukong seems to be the choice here it pairs well with the Orianna at the same time but I do have uh -huh. bad news for you Steve I don't know if you saw this but we are going to be having a bit of a delay after this draft is done one of our players selected the wrong summoner spell and so we are going to have an oh. opportunity to analyze this a little bit further who was it who was it? Poom. Let's out them, broadcast. I don't know if the producers will do that for us. That's but... too late. We already did it. Sorry, Poom. Oh, Got to oh, make Poom. sure you do it. Yeah, I th I think it's funny because sometimes you see games remade over this and sometimes you don't. It's whether or not you can successfully blame it on the client. <laughs> <laughs> with remote setups, it is much more common yeah. for that to happen. So uh, with that said, we will be sending it to a short break here uh, while we get ready to get into the game itself. So stick with us, everybody. Sorry for this, but we'll be right back after this. Now winning wouldn't mean just as much without second place. Announcing our second All-Pro team, they are... We'll look at Kenby, finding an ulti on the quad. A raid dishing out tons of DPS. He flashes out of the Nexus Tower to take quad down. Surdy's burning. He uses the ramp stance to try to escape, but Faisal's cooking him just like Supernova's cooking in this game, too. Oh, my God. Ah, Perry did not stick with the team, and he will get punished for it. Young tries to save his jungler's life, and now he gets punished for it. Good knockup with a follow-up from Kenby. Oh, the way ultimate's not going to be enough. As he lands another Sonic Wave, Kenby just cannot miss these. Chasing that boom flash forward, boom. Strike will pick up that kill. Now back in here on to Manu. Wow. Ray gets that credit. 10 to 5, double the kills to Supernova. And now Zyko actually does go for it. Spyrax on the other side. He has such a good pop blossom angle. And now they're locked in here. Spyrax just needs to pull the trigger. And there he goes. Three man pop up. And that's the ulti. Oh, wow. Make it rain, baby. And there's the wombo combo you were dreaming of. Doesn't matter if you don't believe in them. They believe in themselves. And Onat goes forward. The charm is there. The damage is found. In AoE, they've done it. They've 
done in a sturdy fight for his life. His life Wait, is have they? Have they? And now Sajed, one last attempt. Samudo survives. They will cast stones at giants and watch them fall. The damage is area of effect. Oh no, I think they. But FlyQuest refused to be the fallen. As well, Shochi, who's uh, ramping up at the attack speed. Supernova feel. They can go straight for oh, this dragon. Kill yeah. out of position. Gets caught out. Final spark. Gonna meet. Romer gets caught as well. Wrong wow. spot to be. And just like that, Supernova grab two and answer kills.
Hello and welcome back, everybody. We're getting ready for game number two here in just a moment. But while we give players time to finally get into the new lobby being made, we have some time to digest the draft, which is correct. Even though a summoner spell was incorrect, these are the champions that were locked in. So, Josh, I want you to set the stage here. Are you heavily favoring one side or the other for this game, as well as thinking forward into a fearless best of five? The big thing that I'm looking at right now is going to be how well these guys actually survive the early game. Are they going to be able to find opportunities? Do they get a dragon before the soul actually spawns so they are not as worried about it by the 25 minute mark when we are questioning whether Minui has access to the dragon practice stacks. The other thing is these guys can blow open this game because even though Niles very good on the Nar and it's a good matchup into the Renekton, it's not a good matchup into Renekton plus Wukong. And so it suddenly becomes a situation where Maryville do have one clear spot for Disguise to attack, and we'll see if they can exploit it. Eyes will always be on a smolder anytime that it's locked in to pretty much any game. And it seems like Twitch chat is fully behind Disguised right now. DSD currently at 82% and make it 85%. Spam and chat who you believe will win this game. Is it DSG or is it MU, who, a reminder, have been heavy favorites after the regular season going into playoffs. We were shocked when they dropped that series to DSG. Maybe we, uh, Maybe we should <laughs> need to been. reset our expectations <laughs> because of how this series has gone as well. I also want to give a quick shout-out to Mad Magical living on the duck with that quick quack 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 but... Either way, as we go into this one, we also see that Maryville, now on the blue side, this has been a bit better for most teams, but the one thing that I feel like they're missing is easy dive tools in the bottom side of the map, where Zyko and Scary Jerry, I mean, this is oftentimes where you set up for the blue side in order to go for these really aggressive pushes, but Yuji, oh. on the opposite side, he's not going to be able to invade Wukong because they have figured out that they are going to be playing towards the other side of the map. Both junglers looking to set up on opposite sides, and it's almost a wonder that we're not getting a vertical. Yeah, so we do see you'd be prioritizing going towards that bottom side, maybe looking for dive on the smolder. I'm happy to point out that there isn't like a clear engage for that. The Tom Kench, kind of hard to hit, especially if the enemy AD carry has flash. Kind of just get away from that one. We'll see, maybe we can turn that earlier. But yet, area passing towards the top side makes me think nasty could be early in win condition that they have identified. Rather than play defensively for Minui, instead play offensively, try and get this Renekton online. Yeah. Also gotta point out, Spyrex is hard winning these mid lane trades, right? That's the second time at least that we've seen him land that root into the uh, Q combination, and it's just really chipping out Young's HP bar very aggressively. And now that the way was pushing out, that's an opportunity for Yuji to kind of switch up the plan a little bit. Yes, the bottom lane is getting pushed in, but there's not a real dive opportunity. Yuji is choosing to clear instead of going for the dive. And it does mean that it, uh, Yuji will be looking for something to do after clearing out the bottom side drift scuttle. And now we have information from DSG. Tenasi got the wave shoved as Psycho looks for a little wow. engage there. But Tenasi dropping that ward, they know that Yuji's pathing bot side. They know that the top camps are cleared out, so Minui and Poom can play much safer now. They were already going to be playing safe, let's be honest. But they should at least be able to predict that if this wave hits their turret, there is a good chance that a Viego will look for a dive. They even drop an early ward. It's been cleared out. You can't be much more scripted nice. here, MU. I feel like DSG should see this coming. But I... It can also be a bluff, right? That is one of the things that is awesome about League of Legends because it's not a perfect information game. You don't have to go for things. And this was the play I was expecting, but nice. it was noticed by Disguise. Great ward from Young, knowing that this was the other opportunity to flash train the mid lane, and Perry's here to counter. And Perry was passing topside. Spyrax used flash to jump under the turret. Very low on mana, but doesn't have the backup of Young, who is also out of mana. Dredge line lands bot side, just stacks onto Minui. Shouldn't expect a kill with an early game smolder here, but... Yeah, I mean, I, I love that DSG did so much investment to track where Yuji was going to go. It started with the ward from Tenacity, and then it's benefited from the wards both bot side and mid from Young and Poe. But even though that has already been used, look at the fact that Spyrex is up nearly double CS oh, bot lane. What a dredge line, Psycho, with the double knockup. But Scary Jerry might just burn down. The potion keeps him alive through the ignite. Psycho playing hero right there, hitting both Manui and Poom. But Poom almost found that kill. What a cue. And now, okay, Zyko, good job dodging out on it. They will heal up a fair amount between the Tom Kench and the Senna, but that is a lot of pressure. And he put it on the bottom side, and Perry is in the area, but he would have to go over multiple wards if he wants to try and make anything happen on the bottom side. 
Yeah, that bot uh, river and jungle is lit up for Perry right now. He's going to be spotted even on these wolves, I believe. A word should bottoms that we saw on the minimap earlier there. Not what you expect from the Smolder Nautilus necessarily, but if you find that one Q, if you find that one dredge line as Nautilus, you can make magic happen. Now, no summoner spells on Scary Jerry means that even though Perry is passing topside, there is a chance that they could double back towards this dragon. They have Minui on the reset. He gets a double longsword. He can catch his wave and then look to go for that objective because you said the importance of that. If you can get even one, you delay the timer from your opponent getting soul, and then you can try and get that smolder guaranteed to the 225 stacks. Yeah. But looking out across the board, one of the things that has been going in favor it. of Maryville is the fact that you have a lot of control over the lanes because you just have very strong laners. But the mid lane, that's living up to it. The bot lane, they do have a small advantage. But in the top lane, just as like we were saying, it is not an easy lane for Nar to play into both the Renekton and the Wukong. It's too much burst damage up against a character that does not have any base stats. And Maryville, they will get the first dragon. They will understand that there is a timer that they need to put on the Smolder composition. And they grab the first one fast. Hop Blossom from Spyrax. Yuji with a flash follow. No flash on Young means first blood to Spyrax oh. and he'll barely live. And it's oh, an execute. Oh, wait, Yuji. <laughs> Spyrax, run! Run! All right, might not have been necessary right there, but Perry had flash. He doesn't look for the kill into Spyrax. The root would have been back up, so maybe he just says, not worth to try and go for that kill. Yeah. And still, with the fact that it's an XQ, it is going to be a big win here for Maryville. They already got uh, Young's Teleport previously. Now that they get this kill underneath the turret, with how warmed up the turret actually was, Yuji ends up going down to all the attacks, but that is a lot yeah. of experience and a lot of gold that Young is going to be missing out on. Yeah, I mean, also, you could say for Yuji, not being on the map means he's going to be a little bit behind. That's every jungler right there. You get a kill or an assist with Viego, you're like, I gotta go for it. And now he could get even more punished. Parry's level 6 Fires here. Fires is here. Because Yuji had to reset off of the map and get back on to the Rift, he's a little behind. Spyrex will back him up, and Tenacity was not close enough to help Parry with this invade. So Yuji won't be too punished for this. Isn't level 6 still, though? Should hit it off of this Gromp, I imagine. Yeah, and it's also worth noting here that uh, because Yuji died, he did get the back that goes along with that. He was able to buy those long swords, and so even though he's True. down a level, he still can scrap very effectively, and so he's not that worried, especially with some health right around the corner. Maryville, so far, doing a good job in this early game. They are really, really consistent at finding these early game leads. Last game, we saw that Disguise is not going to give it over easily, though, and so now we got to see how Maryville continues the pace. Yeah, you know, we call that a calculated execute. As now bot side is scrapping out here. Just more stacks onto Manui. Nope. Young no in a tough yet. spot. Flash is about to come off cooldown, but not in time. Stunned up, a lot of damage, and that's Yuji picking up a kill. And good job from Yuji using the ultimate not only for the execute, but also to dodge out on the shockwave at the same time. Great execution. Spyrox calling out, hey, his flash is on my flash timer. We can pick him up before either of them are available. That is mm -hmm. another win here for Maryville in the mid lane, and there's going to be a second plate and a 20 CS lead that is only growing for Spyrax. As the dredge line again lands bot side here. I don't know if you wanted that one, Poom. Manui calls down Mom. Poom's still alive. Will limp away, and now with Perry here, Zyko's actually got to go in full retreat. Scary Jerry still does not have the flash available, and he can't get out of there. Zyko used the ultimate offensively rather than oh, defensively, Spyrex. but now backup has arrived. Spyrax and Yuji get onto parry. Wukong's down. They're looking for Poom. Spyrax should have the cooldowns. Oh. One Q, and the double kill comes through, plus another for Yuji. And finally, when it looks like the side of Disguise is fighting something, it ends up being another Maryville win as Spyrax 3-0-2 in this game. 100% kill participation, and like you were calling out as Poom goes in, it looks a bit tough, but Manui just slowly getting the damage down. Parry comes through to make sure that Zyko and Scary Jerry have to be very worried about this play, but because of Spyrax and Yuji, they are moving around together. He's already coming through as one of his own minions, and there is just enough damage to take down Perry. Just enough time for Yuji to get in range with his ultimate to get on top of yep. Manui. Great stuff. Oh, we're back to live, though. Perry in even more trouble. No ultimate, no flash, no hope of escape. As Yuji now 3-1-2, and two, despite that oopsie under turret, has uh, not died to an enemy champion. True. He's having an incredible game too here. No objective to pick up off of that, but still putting Perry even further behind. Now, honestly, Kangas, if um, 
I hadn't seen any of the previous series that Maryville has played, I would have been willing to call this one over. But Zyko now looking, looking for Pooh. For more. Can they end it here? Oh, Manui walked back into the root of the minion. But just trying to help keep Poom alive, no one's going to go down. Yeah. But we have seen that Maryville have lost games from positions like this before, right? We got to see this going up against AoE. We've been able to see it in their previous uh, series as well. And so now this is an opportunity for Maryville to showcase that they have learned from the mistakes that they were making before. They have a 3,000 gold lead and they stop all the grubs from coming through. So no Twitch chat, no Patreon subscribers able to help out with this game at all. But it is still a position where Maryville you have a bit of a chip on your shoulder when you lose games from leads like this one, and I'm curious how they're going to continue to put Spyrax in the positions to play for the rest of the side lanes, right? We see that Disguise have a lot more vision control on the bottom side than they did even five minutes ago. As Josh tries his best to cast a curse, Maryville University, Spyrax will try his best to carry. Also, Yuji as well. These two, the one-two combo. Coming from FlyQuest of the past, have been having an incredible start here for this game too. And now onto the Dragon for UG Scary Jerry. Going to link up as well while Zyko pushes the bot lane. Minui and Poom went for the resets. That's going to be two Dragons in a row. Part of the reason I would have liked DSG to focus the Dragons earlier on. That first Dragon, it felt like they might have had a setup for. But now they will have that clock, that timer that you set up uh, as early as pick and ban that you have to worry about if you are that Smolder team. He's going for an invade though, and he won't be answered. I actually want to do a smolder update here. Can can we uh, uh check in on smolder stacks? What are the smolder bucks 93? at right now? Ninety three. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Ooh. They've been fighting a lot down there. Speaking of fighting, top sides fighting right now. Flash from Niles hits Meganar, pushes Perry away before the cyclone can come through. I mean, well done for Miles, making sure he lives there. That's a bit of what we were talking about. Tenacity is still up twenty CS down there, but now. Minui not going to get caught on that oh, at all. Can Zyko get on top of him? Flash is available, cleanse is available, no chance. As the damage coming in from Smolder doesn't do quite enough to Zyko, but Poom is buying him a lot of time, a lot of space. Zyko will still live. Smolder not known for his early game damage, about as useful as chopstick and soup, but later on we know that'll turn into a, a spoon, then a ladle. So just, just you wait, everybody. Yeah, I thought you were going to make the cyanide quote. I don't know which one you're talking about. Uh, the uh, nipples on a man. <laughs> also useless. Scary Jerry <laughs> with uh, 50 <laughs> stacks on Senna here. So he's able to keep scaling oh. up himself. We're teleporting down. It's just going to be Zyko coming in to try and catch this wave. They know that Manui and Pooh want to reset, so this should give them another shove. Yeah. It is also worth pointing out is uh, our... Observer Kai does say that we already have 50 souls coming through from Scary Jerry. It's it's a little bit harder to get those as consistently in different lanes, and so it is just a very big scaling thing that you always look at. I care a lot more about the range increase and the damage increase most of the time that you get off of them, but it is still Maryville in the driver's seat for this game. They're still up 3,000 gold. This is the first time that anyone on Maryville, other than Niles, has even seen the top lane. <laughs> True. He's been kind of left to his own devices up there so far. Scary Jerry and Zyko getting a little uh, comfortable with looking at this bot lane turret as they will push in and get a couple of plates for themselves. We're about to lose those in 30 seconds, so nice to cash in on some of them while we can. And I, I will say, with how scrappy the bot lane's been, I said that the smolder is not going to be very strong early on. I'll get back to that point. Tenacity might be in trouble. Nah, he's nice. He dices. He's fine. But the Smolder, as long as you can keep hitting people with abilities and survive, you will scale faster. And I will say that this is one of the faster Smolders that we've seen in the NACL. So MU, while they do have those first two dragons, I think they might be sweating. Because from my calculations, I imagine Minui will have that 225 stack by that Dragon Soul fight, even if DSG give them over this next dragon for free. Which I think is a very big deal coming through for Disguise, right? We know that Disguise with this composition are mostly trying to weather the early game. They had an opportunity to try and go for things up in the top side, but Perry has not spent a lot of time there, but he's revisiting again. Cyclone underneath the turret. Niles trapped in there. Can't throw out damage, so he's got to jump away. Donnie and Shadow will keep him alive. As his jungler did pick up the Rift Herald, I think that signaled to DSG, do not overchase. as Spyrex is also there as backup. Nui, ooh, gets away from the knockup. Scary Jerry's gonna want that one back. Has to pop the heal early. The boom is locked down. Hasn't thrown out the depth charge yet. Now we'll throw it down. Mom comes in as well for the damage. Zyko ooh. lands a stun, and that's a dead boom. Well played from MU in the 2v2.
That was without either of their ultimate. Psycho still has his up, and Scary Jerry use it for the top side of the map. They just yep. brute forced their way through that. But you got to ask, how many stacks did Minui actually get? How many smolder bucks does he have in the bank at this point? Because that was a lot of fighting. A lot of spells came through, and even though you get a kill onto the Tom Kench, you still have to be worried about what the smolder will do when they get to 225. We have a minute left until the next dragon, and like you said, Disguise don't really need to play for that one. And Minui has the second upgrade right now. I saw when he hit that wave bot side. So that means he's within 100 range now. And once you get uh, the Smolder out of bot lane, at yeah, 158. Once you get That's Smolder good. out of bot lane, this, they're doing it right now. Put him mid. You catch every mid wave, and you start giving him the Raptors. Give him the Wolves. Two really good camps for Smolder to pick up because you can just maximize your stack value. You can get from 125 to 225 very accelerated. So MU, they're going to have to use this Herald that they invested time into topside to try and get more gold into their pocket. They do have a big lead, so MU can feel good about that one. But it would be bigger, and they're going to want it to be bigger as we're approaching that Dragon Soul fight. It's nasty also keeping DSG closer in the gold lead here as he will claim a turret on his own. And it is going to be traded, right? We do see Mariel pick the other one up at the same time. So it is still the map opening on both sides. But Maryville in total control of this upcoming dragon. But like you said, we're seeing just that. Smolder going to go pick up the Raptors. He's going to be building up those Smolder Bucks. And so we are on a collision course here, King. is for the fourth dragon. Both teams are going to need to play for that at the same time. And that'll be the make or break point. If Disguise gives over that dragon, gives over dragon four, the... Hextech Soul, very, very powerful. That should be enough for Maryville to close out the game. But if Disguise can stop it and then continue buying time for Minui to scale even further, it's all the tools that they really need as the dragon goes down. Oh, MU picked a bad time to go in there. DSG were ready for the counter strike. And you got the dragon, but the teleport coming in from DSG, and they will find it. Shockwave from Young hasn't even been used, but they don't need it. They pick up two kills. Yuji looking for more here as Perry. Dove in and will assassinate Scary Jerry. Yuji can only watch as his AD carry goes down. DSG. I mean, we didn't expect that to happen until the Smolder was online, but if they can do this now, this is rough for MU. That's definitely a spot where we always look at Maryville and say, hmm, maybe a little bit too aggressive. We know you've been able to hand check most other teams, but we have seen from Disguise that that has not been the case this series. And that shutdown that was on Spire went over towards Tenacity mm -hmm. as well. Suddenly, it's looking more and more dire for Maryville because they have not been able to push the lead. And now Spyrex and Tenacity are in the trigger on Young. Harry's nearby. Remember, Young still has the shockwave hit by the root. Will Shockwave onto both members. Perry is just not interested in trying to help out his mid laner, though, so Young will go down, and Perry will just back and get to the fountain. Uh, honestly, good stuff coming out from Perry, making sure you don't give back more than you need to. And now, Maryville, we got to see them rebuild this gold. Dude, they have three minutes until the next dragon. And I actually really want to get a check on Minui as well. He's got to be close to 200 at this point, and that means he will absolutely be there in time for the next dragon. And now, Maryville are moving down towards the bottom side of the map. They want to set up and take down some of these structures so that these guys have to check further. Ooh, Zyko, again, a little out of position here. He was the one that went for that engage oh, earlier, no. and now he's out of position with a teleport flank from Tenacity, stunned. During the Abyssal Dive, Zyko will fall yet again. He's had an incredible spring split so far, but in this best of five series, he has been going very aggressive for some of these engages, some of these invades, and DSG happy to punish. And Minui at 221 with three minutes left to spare. They oh, have so much crazy. time. We get to see yet again, it is so hard to get the Tom Kench Abyssal Dive onto the Smolder. Just dodge out of it very easily. And then Spyrex and Scary Jerry just caught out trying to go for the play because they didn't have their feet planted for this swing back. And I feel like that has been a major theme so far of this series is that Maryville trying to do things a little bit too fast, trying to do things in situations where they think they have a numbers advantage, but they don't know. And the skies have been able to punish with that. And Minui... He's got 227. 227. At 19 minutes into the game, that is a very fast smolder. I don't know what our record is, but that's got to be close if not taking it right there. So Minui is ready to fight, and you can see that Poom 
is as well. Even with four members of Maryville here, all you need is Smolder to shoot out a couple of abilities, and MU say, nah, we don't want to take that fight anymore. Absolutely not. You don't want to give him more stacks, because the damage just increases from that position. The mid lane turret doesn't even fall. And there's just a minion named Spire Eyes moving towards the top side to try and pick that one up, but it is still <laughs> a position where Maryville is suddenly on the back foot despite, despite having this gold lead. And it almost feels yeah. as though Maryville is going to be the ones who have to try and break the path from Disguise. But if there's a team that can do it, I actually think it's going to be Maryville. They are so good at using gates. They are so good at bringing Spyrex and Niles from different angles to try and mm -hmm. find these fights. And if they use that death wall to their advantage, they can absolutely find Minui. And Spyrex still has the majority of that gold lead, if not all of it. If we look at the matchup for just the mid laners, last time it was huge. Yeah, I mean, 2.1k differential. That is the gold lead for MU. So Spyrex will need to step up here in this game too and be that big difference maker for them because the game is starting to slip. DSG have multiple members here hovering Niles on the NAR, but they're not going to pull the trigger, so he's fine. A minute till that dragon. MU, this is going to be a, a pivotal fight for the series, for the game, for their chances here in Spring Split, because if they lose this game, their back's against the wall. They're going to have to reverse sweep a best of five. And that is so tough. It is so difficult to go for a reverse sweep because that game three is so pivotal, and you know that you don't have a lot of room to wiggle. And as we start looking at the rest of it, remember that all these champions that Maryville have picked up, they're not going to have access to again. This is Every single one of them going back to another comfort pick, right? I think Scary Jerry and Zyko on the Senna Tom Kench might be the least typical picks that we see from this team, but it's not as though they don't play it. It's just that they don't play it as much as things like the Callista. It's working so far for DSG in this game as they have priority at Look the at river. Spyrax. Ooh, he is a minion. They're known to hang out in the jungle, will they DSG are. realize. I don't I know. Think if... I think they're going to notice it. Out okay, they notice it now. Ward right there. Yeah. So Spyrex. Oh, it's not a control ward. It's just a regular ward. But he uh -oh, doesn't know uh -oh. that. Oh, no. Oh, okay. <sighs> what a time for a pause, everybody. Right at the pivotal team fight. This is Dragon Soul for MU. They still have a gold lead, but it is only on Spyrex. And Smolder's already at 225 stack. So if they lose this team fight, I'm ready to call it. That's pretty much just game guaranteed for DSG. And that would put them up 2-0 in the series. We're waiting for confirmation on what the reason for the pause is. But I guess it gives us time to set the yeah. stakes here a little bit more, Josh. Because this could be a series-defining moment. I am getting flashbacks, actually, to the last time these two teams played up against each other. And I believe it was... Yeah, Scary J was playing Smolder. And he, there was a fight around the Baron Pit where, mm -hmm. as a smolder, he gets caught by a Tom Kench Abyssal dive. He thought he was out, but maybe it was because it was on the ramp. Maybe it's because he thought he was faster. He gets caught, and the game ends. Now the shoe's on the other foot. Maryville are the ones playing with the Tom Kench. Manui is the one playing with the smolder. Something very similar can happen. We have seen how impactful these Nikos can really be. I, I really can't set it up more than this is going to be a flip for the game. And both yep. teams have the tools that they need. It is entirely about their execution. Let's see how they execute as we are back to live. DSG are on the dragon. If they can get this and deny Shockwave. the soul. Shockwave from Young just to buy time. Mom comes down as well. They're trying to keep MU out of Spyrax. the pit. Do as much damage as they can. Spyrax with a flank. Gets out of Manui. He flashes away. The smolder is in a safe oh, position. Over. Parries by the blast base. Manui gets insane damage down. A double kill to the dragon. Smolder's popping off. Manui with the triple kill as tenacity will slay scary jerry dsg even get the dragon that should just be the game spyrax gets his way onto manui but it is not enough even with the early shockwave coming out from young just doing a lot of damage and catching the members of maryville as they come in there was no follow-up for spyrax he goes in he finds his way to the one target that you need to get to but that is not enough no one else able to find the instant cleanse yuji tries to find his way but it is not there and manui is able to shred the rest of this fight afterwards so much true damage so much damage just across the board and the dragon soul was stopped Disguise walk away with a Rally Cry Baron buff, and hey, now they can go right on back towards the Dragon. They pick up the Hextech Dragon as well, and for the first time this game, they're up in gold. Yeah, it's all over but the crying here for MU. It's not game yet, but it just feels 
insurmountable at this point. You didn't get a soul. Smolders 4-1-4, four, and four, and with this Baron buff, I'm expecting DSG to be able to, if not end the game, at least take down inhibitors here. Yeah, and that will there's... just allow the Smolder to keep scaling up. The window of opportunity for MU has closed. It is very small. I'd say there's a three-minute window right now for Maryville to try and make another play because Minui's flash is down. Okay. And that, that's like about it. it. Because if you wait for Minui to have his flash and his plants back up, we saw what happened. Spyrex got the ultimate on him. It wasn't enough. The rest of Disguise was able to respond and prevent anybody else from getting towards their AD carry. But Maryville, they're not going for it. They're committing Sparks towards the side lane. Yes, he should be able to beat up on Tenacity a little bit up here, but Tenacity is still very strong, and they're collapsing upon Spyrax. Young's here on the flank. Shockwave used. Spyrax tried to rocket belt away. Pop Blossom hits nobody, and well time from Tenacity to guarantee the kill for himself, picking off Spyrax, the most fed member in a side lane. And that's it. That should be the end of it. Yes, Spikes will have access to the ultimate again, but Minui's cleanse is almost back up. The Flash is halfway back up, and it will be ready for the next dragon fight. So Disguise, they have all the tools that they need to. They don't have the grubs, I suppose, but that is the one thing that they could be missing to take this towards the next level. They get another turret. They should be getting the top lane turret as well, and they're going to be choking Maryville out of their own side of the jungle. And I'll say this, Redemption, I think, from Nui a little bit here on the Smolder, because you had alluded to the last time these teams faced off against each other. Looking at that game one, it was Minui on the Smolder, and he wasn't able to close it out. This time around, though, I mean, he's got all the tools to do it. Hopefully we're not cast cursing him right now, because he is DSG at this point in time. Here's Can he flank. survive Here's the, the flank. teleport flank? It's coming through. Tenacity's not here yet. Mom comes down. Spyrex is unspotted yet. Yuji takes down Poom, though. And now Spyrex gonna get onto Manui. Some damage goes through. DSG in full retreat. They've already lost their support. Now they're focusing everything onto Spyrex, and they got him. Manui, unstoppable tenacity, is teleported in on a rampage. And DSG absorb the teleport flank. They will dive the turret. A double kill to tenacity. He might fall at the end here, but DSG, they have their most important member. Full health, Manui can free fire on a Zyko. Niles has to run all the way away, and that is a barren powered wave waiting to hit these inhibitors. And that should be the end here. Even if the game doesn't end, that was the chance that Maryville needed to try and take while Manui had no flash. And now these guys are asking, do we end it here? Yes, we're gonna be going for it. It's only Zyko and Mini Niles. It's gonna be tough. I don't think they actually can. Yeah, five seconds on Spyrax, five seconds on Yuji. They gotta run away and try to not die on the retreat. Lego doesn't hit the slow on a Manui, he gets out of there. You're right, I did realize I had it backwards. It was Manui who got caught by Zyko. That was such a big pivotal moment in that last series, but here we do have Disguise. They are going to be resetting. There is the Dragon spawning in 50 seconds, and it is so, so tough for Maryville to try and do anything. We'll get to see exactly how, because they actually got the first kill in this fight. It looks like Poom just a little bit too far forward, but you can kind of see how far back the members of Maryville have to play from Minui. As long as Minui is in the fight, he can do Ooh. so much work, but they turn onto Spyrax, and Spyrax dies before the Pop Blossom even finishes. Yeah, I mean, it was a nice look from Spyrax. I was wondering, did they spot him? I think that the reason Poom was so far away from everybody else on the team it seemed like DSG spotted him. <laughs> they were walking away thinking, we got to watch out for that flank. But the fact that Spyrex just gets popped means that there's no more threats, and we are back to live. Seven seconds for the next Dragon MU. If they can get this, maybe they still have some kind of chance, but it's still going to be so tough. DSG are willing to take the fight. Manu is walking forward. Young's in the brush. They don't have a ward down. It's control warded right now. DSG oh, front to back. can play with the vision. Tenacity's on a flank here. MU in some trouble. The Nautilus ultimate goes down to the Scary Jerry. They don't have to worry about that anymore. But Niles almost dead already. Oh. Mom comes down. Big damage on the Scary Jerry. Spyrex as well. Pop Blossom Tenacity is available. Flash. But he's just going to die too soon again. Tenacity's got his number. DSG are making it happen right now. They even got the supers in the top wave. Tenacity healing oh. through everything that MU could throw at him. Double kill to Manui. And DSG will not go quietly into this playoffs. <laughs> they want to run it back into another finals appearance, making quick work of MU. This is about to be a 2-0 to start off the best of five, but they want to pat the sacks a little bit more. Why let Zyko live through it? 
go for the A's. Tenacity claims it. DSG are showing up in playoffs. And so much redemption for Madui too on this folder like you called out. He is able to stand tall. The flags do not matter. He does not get caught. And they get themselves over that hill. And this guy's 2-0. They upset uh, Maryville at the beginning of this playoff. Yep. They're about to do it again. The, the journey of DSG has been incredible. They lost to TLC, who would be their rematch if they can win this series. Uh, but that's also a very strong team that scaled so far into playoffs. But the fact that they were able to take MU down the first time, we were like, okay, was that a fluke? They had a close series against TLC, but still, it's DSG. They weren't high-seeded going into this playoffs, but they're on the precipice of sweeping MU, one of the teams that we had as favorites to take the whole thing. We're going to send it to a short break to see if they can make the miracle happen. You'll want to stick around for this one. Introducing the new Footlong Sidekicks at Subway. Try the warm and delicious Footlong Cookie, Footlong Pretzel, or Footlong Churro. Before this guy won this, he actually won this. And now these guys, they're trying to do the same. He's looking for the killer instinct. He's going Masu. in. He finds two. He finds three. Masu, you are utterly ridiculous. This guy is also trying to do what that guy did. And he didn't win one of those, but he did win this. Welcome to the new era of Toast to our champions, Disguise. This guy played one split of LCS and then made semis at Worlds. It's been a long journey, but I'm happy to be here now. He's always been really good, but he finally made the comeback. Oh, and he did it with this guy. This guy won Academy, and he had some dreams. I want to be like the best, best NA mid laner to go to Worlds, right? Dokla, however, very, very low, reinforced by the set ultimate, and the pop blossom is so awesome! This kid? <laughs> yeah, this kid. He actually didn't win an Academy, but a lot of people thought he was good, and boy, were they right. This guy made Worlds his very first year as a player. It took him a while to get back, he even played with this kid. But then, they did all of this together. Nobody thought they'd win LCS! Nobody thought they'd beat G2! It's time to change your mind! You know all of these names, but do you know the names of who's next? The future of the LCS starts right after the LCS. Welcome to Challengers. Get up on your feet, this is a shakedown.